Hey everybody, my name is Mark and I run Northeast Photographic right here in Maine. Uh, I hope you uh, enjoyed my last three videos. Uh, this time I thought I'd shake it up a little bit and cover, uh, cover the ground of a few different little projects I'm working on. The first one is a camera that I'm testing. I think I need to send it back to the manufacturer. It's called an RX60MLU. Um, it's kind of acting up a little bit. Uh, it's from this Ukrainian company. I bought it actually during the war. It's these rebuilt cameras that are uh, pretty fun to use. And uh, I'm just going to give it a little test and send that out. But while I was doing that, I thought that we could go over one of the developers that we sell here in the store. Um, we don't just sell it. We offer it as an alternative developer that you might want to use uh, on your black and white film. That developer is called 510 Pyro. And I thought we could go over Pyro, Galal, the base developers, and what they are and, and how to use them. 510 Pyro, I think, is um, one of the really nice options because it's probably the most easy to use in terms of all the Pyro developers. Uh, it comes in a really viscous, kind of syrupy solution, but the benefit of that is it's only one mix, so you mix it just straight with water, and it also lasts basically forever. Maybe not forever, but they say seven years. So for the average working photographer um, that maybe isn't developing film all the time by yourself, you can buy a bottle of this and then, you know, maybe if you develop, develop film like two or three times a year, it's going to be there and it's going to be still ready and possible and it, it won't have gone bad. Uh, so you can use it uh, basically at any time. That's what I really like about it for home users these days. Also, it's all, uh, it creates one of the most beautiful, it's, it's one of the most beautiful working developers that you can get. So I'm really happy that we're able to stock it. It's made by a company called Zone Imaging. Uh, they're out of the UK and we import it here. And then the other uh, couple projects are I'm getting ready to convert our Epson P6000 to a full, uh, they call it piezography, but let's call it carbon monochrome ink set. So that means taking the color uh, inks all of the color stages and replacing them with not only shades of gray but tonal changes from warm to cool and a gloss optimizer. So we should be able to get some of the best possible inkjet monochrome prints um, that these machines are able to make. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about that conversion. Um, we found ourselves with two 24 inch inkjet printers. It's kind of a long story. Uh, I have to thank a customer for that. But only natural, only because of that, um, I have decided that why not just convert it to this cool technology that I've always wanted to try. And then the other thing is also about prints. I'm going to show you a uh, Colex RA4 color darkroom paper processor that I'm currently in the process of restoring. And hopefully over the next few weeks we can get that up and running so I can print color in the darkroom. Uh, but anyway, let's start with the uh, RX camera and shoot a test roll and we, talk, we can talk about 510 Pyro. All right, so this is an RX. 60 MLU. Uh, it's made by, well, it's not really made by this company, but it's basically rebuilt by this company called RX, which is in Ukraine. Um, they take Kiev 6Cs, uh, which were made in kind of uh, Soviet era Ukraine, and they rebuild them to uh, acceptable spec and they offer them for sale. Um, they are, they're actually great cameras. Uh, I really like the company. I really like these cameras. You might think, oh, cheap, you know, Soviet equipment. But you know what they were doing? They were copying the good stuff from Carl Zeiss and you know other uh, other designs. And I got to tell you, the lens uh, is pretty sharp, and I really it's got a great rendering, um, excellent contrast. Uh, it, it's pretty awesome in color. Um, so it's like kind of keeping up with some of the better, you know. Um, old period lenses that I've used. So I really like the camera. I like the way that it works. Um, so I'd like to get it kind of back into uh, fully functioning and 100% shape. So I just need to set, uh, shoot a test roll so I can send it off to them. 
um, and they can kind of see what's up with this camera, what's going wrong. Uh, you can kind of see I'm talking and loading at the same time and running into problems. Uh, it looks like it's really really so the tricky part is just line up the slots here, and then the first roll. There we go. And set lock in, drag your paper across, line up. Okay, next slot. Nice slot. advance. One, two. And then you can see the dots right there. Okay, so that's loaded up. I'm going to close it. And one, two, one. Good to go. Okay, uh, I shot the whole roll at ISO 64. That's typically how I rate FP4+. Plus. I know it's a 125 speed film. Speed ratings are somewhat controversial. Uh, you know, lately these days, I just like a slightly denser, more dense negative, and that's just how I do it. So we unload it, similar to any other kind of SLR style medium format camera. As you can see, it's right there. It's waiting for me. And uh, let's take this into the dark room and we'll mix up some 510 pyro and develop this uh, normally. All right, hold on. Let's go over some 510 pyro basics. What is it? Okay, it's a black and white film developer. Um, it's different from XTAL or HC110 or Rodinol in that it uses a developing agent. This is when I get a little technical and there's a lot of mouth burgers. <laughs> is, that a, is that a word? I don't, I don't think so. Uh, Called, uh, called Pyrogallal. That's the main developing agent. And I'm going to go over the technical reasons of why it's good in a later segment. But it's, it's a very special developer. Um, and for a long time, there have been, I mean, for almost the whole history of black and white photography, there's been pyro based developers. But only in recent years have they become, uh, I guess, more popular since some newer formulations have come out. Um, and also just people just sort of rediscovering them. But also there's some new formulations that are much easier to use. Typically uh, you have developing uh, uh, developers that use pyro that involve um, kind of kits that you sort of have to mix by, mix all in the darkroom right before you're about to use it from multiple stages. So you'll have like, like mix part A with part B with water and then you can work and then it oxidizes very quickly. That, that's true of like PMK. Um, not so now with what we're selling. So let's get to that. So we sell 510 Pyro. We can sell it in these 100 milliliter bottles. And we also sell it in um, these 500 milliliter bottles. This is actually the last one left if you want to buy it. When you buy 510 Pyro, it comes in a bottle. And you, as you can see, it's a really syrupy developer. Okay, so it's really thick. You need to mix the hell out of it. Okay, we're going to show you how to mix that in the dark room but do not just pour it in there and expect it to work. You really need to mix this up. It needs to go into solution. You'll see that as, it, as you kind of stir it around. All right, it also comes with a syringe. I think these are actually for like giving kids medicine. But anyway, because it's so thick and because you're only needing very small quantities of it at a time, you can just extract by the milliliter, one, two, three, four, five milliliter, the amount that you need. Okay, so what do I mean by small quantities? The normal working version of this developer is diluted one to 100. Now in practical terms, it's not exactly that because we just round up a little bit. So one to 100 means one part developer, 100 parts water. So 101 total parts. Technically, I think we're doing really 99 to 100, but we're not getting so exacting that we're using that denomination because you would have to, to, to do actually one to 100, it would be like in a uh, 500 milliliter mix, it would be like 4.9599, you know, like to 495 milliliters. You couldn't make, you couldn't mix that to that exact point. So really you're just adding five milliliters to 100 milliliter. No, 
five milliliters to a 500 milliliter mix, meaning pour in the developer, fill to 500 milliliters, mix to uh, stir it all up to, to get it all into solution, and then that's your working developer. The other thing you get when you buy it from us is a card. This is from Zone Imaging. It's got some basic instructions on how to use it and, and also a QR code that links you to development times and things like that. All right, let's get back to the darkroom and I'll show you actually working with this developer in practice. Okay, so I'm gonna use the Helin TAS. I believe you saw me do that in the video on uh, ADOC CMS20. Uh, it's an easy way to develop film in a ultra consistent way. Uh, I don't really need to be doing that for now, but um, I'd like to use my investment, so here we are. Uh, all right, let's look up the development time for uh, FP4 Plus in 510 Pyro. Of course, I use the massive dev chart like every other sucker. Um, actually, usually I do use the um, uh, uh, literature provided by Zone Imaging, but um, this is just easy. And I think that it's updated pretty well. I think that he's synced it with the, um, uh, the massive dev chart people. All right, so 125, I'm getting 10 minutes at 20C. So let's program that into the Helin TAS. Pull it off the roll. All right. Now, I don't know if you guys can see this, but I can immediately see that the film has a distinctive um, tone to it. Uh, it it looks kind of... It, it doesn't look green like some pyro uh, developers will will make it, but it's kind of like a greenish yellow. So there's definitely a stain there. Okay. You can definitely also see my shutter failing. Okay, so what I shot was a test roll, and uh, it showed me what I thought I was seeing, which is some shutter intrusion into a lot of the frames at high speeds. I'm going to get those sent off to uh, RX. I think my metering was like a little shaky, but the images were great. Um, I don't want to go over the developer from a, like, look at this image in Lightroom, zoom in on it, like, look at how the grain compares to x -tall. I'll leave that for a later date. Um, I'd rather explore why I started using 510 Pyro over time, over a series of videos, uh, when I'm actually shooting and making work. Some of it's going to be in large format, some of it's going to be uh, in smaller formats, but all of it. I think is going to be pretty much printed in the darkroom because um, that is how I approach my work. And when I, as an analog photographer, um, I just think that uh, you get the most out of alternative developers when you actually use the optical um, techniques in the, in the darkroom. So for me, that's how I want to explore this. And uh, I think I can share it with you guys that way. I, I think that'll be the best. But for now, you kind of know how this developer works and I encourage you guys to try it. Um, if you want to buy a bottle from us, they're available. Uh, otherwise, if you want to just like select 510 Pyro as a developing option, you know we'll we'll develop your film that way, and I, I think you'll see a difference, especially for films like Delta 3200 and Tri-X or HP5. Try it out with that. I would say start with that. Um, the slower speed films, you know, they're already pretty fine grained, so you don't honestly see as big of a difference right away. Um, but I think that uh, it's it's worth trying. Now I promised that I would get into <laughs> some of the other stuff. And I'm hoping we still have time for it. Uh, but as you can see, I've started to arrange the kit that I got from Cone Imaging. 
uh, their pisography stuff. So I have some of it right here. You can see that this is a bottle of ink. I'm gonna hold it up to the camera and hopefully it focuses on that. Okay, yeah, you can see it's about 350 milliliters of this carbon monochrome pigment. Um, and this is a uh, cool tone, light gray. And then we have cool tone, dark gray. And then we have high density photo black. And then we have, uh, what do we have? We have warm tone, light gray. Um, and then the other things that it comes with are like, you might recognize this. This is a 700 milliliter <coughs> um, cartridge. Now I'm supposed to basically, I've got a whole set of these and I'm supposed to take the ink and sort of use a syringe and fill these things up. And then these guys have little Epson chips that it can see and understand, I guess. And then I, I sort of get, get all these ready and then I put them in the printer and then the printer is gonna be sort of set up as if I just bought it new and it's gonna prime everything. And then you, I guess you have to go through a few different printing cycles to flush out the old inks. They do make a product that um, flushes out the old inks for you, but it's very expensive. And they, their advice that they're giving, the current advice that they're giving now says um, it's optional, uh, and that if you 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 might just as be as well to to just kind of do the flushing manually. So since my printer has gotten somewhat light use, I'm just going to do just going to do the flush with the ink itself. It will waste some ink, but you know, it's, it, it, I'm wasting money. Well, spending money either way. Um, so let's check out the other project that I'm going to do with the Colex processor. All right, so last but not least, we have this monstrosity. Um, this was given to me by Bard College, so I have to thank them for that. Uh, my wife and I made a road trip. We drove down there, and they just straight up gave us their RA4 processor. It's in rough shape. Um, there's a lot of staining. There's a lot of crust buildup from spills. Um, there's even some broken plastic parts. Um, I don't know the condition of the boards, and it looks like, you know, the foams have seen better days, but um, I see potential here in this jalopy. And I think, given my experience um, fixing up our Colex that we use as our main film processor, I think I can get it fixed. Um, I've forever wanted to be able to print RA4 the way I used to do it back in college with a machine like this. This will take up to 20 inch wide paper, so that's like 20 by 24 in standard paper cut sizes, um, and down to probably, you know, 4 by 5, 5 by 7, um, and automatically develop it, and it'll come out dry on the other end in full, beautiful color. And it's kind of becoming a lost art. Ironically, I feel like even some of the color um, alternative processes have become more available than RA4. Um, it's a roller transport processor. It's really big. There's some, de uh, it's been almost, I can't express how hard it is to get these things. I've been looking for like a tabletop size version of this. Maybe I'd be happy with something that did like 16 by 20, um, but I've just had no luck getting one. I even ordered one from Germany and then the guy just kind of said it wasn't going to be ready. And then I, he kind of canceled my order. So uh, it's been a whole journey, but I got this one. And it's, it's, it's free, but not free, and then I have to rebuild it, basically. But I hope you guys will join me on that journey. Um, Colex, the company, is still around, so they're going to help me to uh, the extent that they can. And I think we can make it beautiful again. And then, hey, maybe I can offer uh, color RA4 printing to you guys, and I'll be able to do it from 35 millimeter to 8 by 10 in uh, format sizes from my enlargers that I have set up here. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, anyway, uh, I, I hope you guys want to continue watching these vlogs as we uh, just kind of expand the lab and, and, and push the capabilities of what can be done with printing and with uh, what we're doing currently. So um, thank you for watching. Again, my name is Mark. I run Northeast Photographic here in Maine. Uh, if you are not a Northeast Photographic customer, I encourage you to send us a couple of roles. We have a lot of great programs. We have a great rewards program to get you money back. Um, and I think you'll like some of the options if you just check out our website. So uh, thank you for watching again and uh, have a great day.